How does upsampling increase the information in music? Frank in Bayside, New York asked this question, and he says the bit depth on compact discs is 16 bits and the sample rate is 44.1. It's all true. Which means that there are only that many samples of a sound wave taken every second. So my question is, how does oversampling or a higher sampling rate DAC, or in the case of the direct stream DAC, increase the information that's not even there to begin with, actually accomplish to cause such a phenomenal difference in sound reproduction? What a great question. All right, first thing you gotta know, let's see if I can put this chair back for my relaxed introduction. <laughs> we can't make more information. That's the simple bit. There is no more information. You are correct, okay? There's no more information to be had. Upsampling does not make more information, except that it almost does. So let me explain how this works. And, and please, you who understand this, give me a little bit of poetic license here. Don't get all pissy on me. Look, I'm gonna try and explain this very simply, as best I can, because I want the people who don't quite get this to get us a grasp of it, a sense of it. So if this isn't, uh, as our chief engineer, Bob Stadther likes, he says, you know, a lot of times, some of the things you say are not exactly technically correct because I start spewing and going, you know, and, and, I, and I'll miss certain things. Just forgive me for that, okay? This is going to be a, a good interpretation of how this works, but because I, I, I think it's important that we understand it. So first, Let's talk about sample rate, okay? So in digital audio, what we wind up doing is taking, and I, I like to describe this as snapshots, okay? So we've got a series here of windows, and I'm drawing lines that are, well, they're supposed to be equal distance apart from left to right, and I've got a, a series of lines here. And each of these lines is we're gonna call it a snapshot, okay? Like, just picture a camera going off. Chica, 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 right? Every one, you know, uh, 44,000 times a second, right? We're taking a snapshot, either of the left channel or the right channel, so which gives us our, our 44 is actually 22, what, whatever it is, because it's, that, that sample rate is, no, no, Nyquist is, twice what you want to do. No, so I, I take that back. It's for one channel. The, 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 there's a, a thing called the Nyquist um, formula or rule, which basically says it, whatever frequency you want to hit, let's call it 20 kilohertz, you have to sample at twice that, 40 kilohertz. And because of the, the, the filter requirements uh, to then make sure there's nothing after 20 kilohertz where we get something called aliasing, but that's beyond the scope of what we want to talk about. We have to go a little bit higher, so we're going to go so that the maximum we can do is 22K and then, ah, boy, it just drops right off, okay? So, uh, so we're just going to look at one channel. And that 44K, so every one 44 thousandths of a second, we take a snapshot and if, if, we're gonna, if we're building a sine wave, and I just drew the, the top half of a sine wave, then at each junction, uh, as the sine wave moves up and down, I'm taking a small sh snapshot of this voltage. This is, the sine wave is just rising and falling voltage, right? You talk into a microphone, the microphone converts your sound pressure to rising and falling voltage. And all our digital signal wants to do is look and measure what is the level of that voltage within that snapshot, okay? So for every second, we're gonna take 44,000 snapshots of the voltage here and record it as a number. So the size of that number is determined by the bit depth. So 16 bits is 
how many um, numbers are within a, 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 a word, okay? So let's start over. Well, are we getting too complicated here? The more bits you have, the higher the number you can count to. So if I, if I had, and maybe this is worth showing, I don't know. Here I go getting off onto a tangent. Do you want to see how to count digitally? So, and again, I, I get this messed up, but you, you get the idea. So if we draw what we used to call a truth table, I don't remember exactly, uh, and this is zero, um, one, two, four, eight. Okay, and if I want to count to one, then imagine this, th th we now have one, two, three, four. We have a four-bit word here, okay, as opposed to a 16-bit word. And you can, you'll, you'll soon see that I can't count uh, all that high, right? So if I want uh, the number uh, one in this thing, I'm going to put a check mark. Let's just use a check mark. We'll put a check mark here, zero here, zero here, and zero here, and zero here. Do I have, I guess I shouldn't have the, the zero. I don't know. We're going to take that out. There, there's our four bits. Okay. So that's how I count to one. I turn this particular one on and, and this one off, this one off, this one off. If we were to put this into a word, a word is a group of bits. Okay. So here's, our, here's our, our, our word length is four bits long. And the first bit, remember in digital audio, it's ones and zeros. It's all we got, on or off, okay? So in this one, here's, so what I just drew was a single square wave going up and then I made little ticks over here to show for our sample. So, we, so uh, for, for this one, we, we're going to have this, and this is zero, zero, zero. So one, zero, zero, zero equals one. If I want two, I go zero, and I, I raise up the two, zero, zero equals two. If I want three, I go on, on, off, off equals three. If I want nine, it's off, 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 on. Oops, sorry. It's the, the, the least significant bit down here is on, off, off, on. And that's how I count eight plus one is nine. Eight plus two is 10. And I can count up what, to 16, I think? I think I can count to 16 on this. And that's as high as I can count. So if, and that's how we digitally count, and that those four bits on or off make up a word. That's a digital word. And if, if I were to extend that truth table out times 16 or 24 or 32, you can see it, it, it and it goes up by twos, two, four, six, eight, you know, right? And by those numbers and using that kind of counting scheme called a binary counting scheme, I can count up to 16 with four bits, but when I get up to 16 bits, there, we're, we're up into, I guess, a million. You know, we're up to a very high number, and I don't remember all the numbers. And 24 is even, and that, and that can relate to decibels of sound. But what's important to us is the numbers can get higher. Each of those numbers is dividing up a slice of voltage. So here I'm going to draw a line. This is, and my line is going vertical up. And at the bottom here is zero. This is our voltage. And up here is our, our, the top volts. And let's call that five volts, right? So that, that, this, this then is the size of our signal from zero and then going up vertically to five. If I have a 16-bit, well, if I have a four-bit word, I can only it's a, for each snapshot, I can only break it into four discrete chunks. So my sine wave would look like, like, like that. It would be a very crude looking sine wave because I only have four, I only have four places I can measure the change in voltage. And so 
this stair step looks like, you know, a set of stairs. And that's a very crude representation of what I want, which is this nice, smooth line, right? So what do I want? Well, I want finer gradations. But now, let's imagine dividing this line up with a 16-bit word, and, and again, I don't remember how many, you know, where's Alexa when you need her? I don't remember how many um, numbers you can do it, uh, in, with a 16-bit word, but it, it's a lot. So now I can break this up into very fine snapshots. And if I had 24 bits or 32 bits, even finer, and finer and finer and finer or higher and higher and higher, whichever way I want to go. And it depends on how much voltage I'm trying to define, okay? So that's what bits do. Bits tell me how, how high I can measure something and with what granularity I can measure something, all right? And the, the sample rate, 44.1, or 88, or 176, or 192, are the number of snapshots, how quickly I can take snapshots within a given second. 192,000 times I can take a snapshot for a high sample rate. So I look very uh, quickly. But imagine if I only had 16 bits, no matter how many times I looked, if I look quick, 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 but if I can only define that changing voltage by you know, a, 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 a low granularity number, it's not going to do me a lot of good. All right, so last bit. If we look at, I'm going to draw, a, oh, I'm going to do this bigger because it's, I'm not a very good artist. So I'm now drawing a sine wave using bits, okay? And what I have, it just looks like a, a fine stairway, okay? And it's going up and then it is going down. Just, just imagine like one of those uh, Mayan temples, you know, that go up and you've got stairs on both sides. That's what we're seeing here. So if we want to take this basic information that we have and we want to upsample it, we want it to go faster, I want to discuss two things because I don't want this to go too long. Why we would want to do that and what happens and what can we do to increase the information because we really don't know any more about what the original event was, right? We just don't know. Here's what we can do, and this is something called interpolation. So interpolation says that I can mathematically predict that if I'm going from stair step number three to stair step number four to stair step number five, that along the way I went up, right? Because I, I, if I hold that sample in a memory, I can look at it and say, oh, I can see what direction I'm going. Well, in order to get from you know, step three to step six, I had to pass through 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, right? I can predict that. And because the, the wave, I know I've already capped the wave off. It's not moving too quick. So I can say that I could then make these finer. I could, I could go like this. And that's called interpolation. At least that's what I remember. And if I interpolate it, I get much finer, i.e. greater bit depth than I had, um, or I could, uh, uh, um, maybe a better way to put that is, is a higher sample rate. I couldn't, I, it's, it's, as, it's as if I looked at each of these quicker, right? That's actually what, that's the more proper term. So I can increase the sample rate and predict where these would have gone and be pretty darn accurate. That's how I got more information, but of course, there really isn't more information. So, okay, um, last part. Why would we want to do that? One of the problems in early digital were the filters. We had to have what we called brick wall filters. You, in digital, you don't want to go over overboard in terms of volume and you certainly don't want to have anything higher than what your A to D converter can accept. So if, if 20 kilohertz, there we are, uh, and now I'm going to draw a line that goes like this, that goes straight downhill, right? 
20 kilohertz comes in and then I'm like, whoa, I'm going to drop that off and turn the volume down uh, so that by the time 22 kilohertz comes out, uh, I'm down here, uh, you know, uh, minus 70 dB or something, whatever. I'm, I'm way down in volume. 20 kilohertz, I'm flat, and down here, I'm, there's nothing here because if we have signals that come in faster than the A to D can handle, bad things happen. Artifacts happen called aliasing that you don't want to deal with, right? So, um, given that that is the case, the filter, designing a filter like this that has no effect whatsoever on the audible part that we want to hear is near impossible. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a magician's feat. You can hardly do it, and they didn't. And so, yes, they made it, but it had uh, sonic effects and impacts on the signal, and we heard that. What we'd like to do is have a much gentler filter, right? We'd like to be able to roll this thing off on a much gentler slope, because that filter, that to where we take it out, maybe to 50 kilohertz. So I'm drawing that out as a gentle reduction in volume out to 50 kilohertz, and then it's gone. Well, we can do that if we have a higher sample rate, right? So if my sample rate's 44, um, then I got to be out of there by 22. If my sample rate is 88, well, I got to be out of there by 44 kilohertz and 176 and onward. So I can make much gentler filters by taking the sample rate way out by upsampling. And that fact alone, which isn't really giving me more information, will make for better sounding digital audio because the filters are so much easier to design and so much gentler to the audio band. Okay, that's probably enough for one day. Hope that helped a little bit. Thanks. Bye.